Anchors up. Sales at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are we doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, Jared. Doing all right. Buckeyes get a uh, get a W this weekend. Looked pretty good here. Um, can't complain too much. How about you, Jared? No, no Stuart. The poop show's on Wednesday. How That's, you doing, sorry. Jared? Sorry about that. I'm doing fine. I am doing just fine. Um, Ohio State looked like this was this is what we wanted from Ohio State. Let's just say that right off the bat. Um, this is this is the game we wanted. Uh, someone get that man, Marv. Oh, someone go get the man. OK, yeah, 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 for sure. Um, God, he was so good. The 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 catch on the sidelines, like we, we're almost like spoiled about. What he's able to do on the sidelines. But man, that there's some, there have been some still images I've seen of that one that in particular, one. Kyle. That one in particular, uh, uh, yes, look, same, look, say, same look, one, look Austin. Like to, looks like he's about to like twist something he shouldn't be in that one. I don't even think there's a yoga move named that. It's almost like a reclining warrior. I, I don't even know. It's it's yeah. He's not human. No. I, I, I yeah, that's not a thing. That's not a thing you should do. It's called the route man. It is now that 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 is now a yoga move. And we call it the route man or the marvelous Marv, as uh, our, our good friend Gus Johnson would say. It literally Honestly, looks like he grew out another leg from his shoulder. <laughs> that's one way to get the toe tap. All right. Ohio State 56 Notre Dame. Notre Dame. Wow. In, Indiana 14. And Ohio State just dominated. Yeah. Well, yeah, where is Notre that. Dame? In your in your defense, where's Notre Dame? It's in Indiana. Yeah, you're you're right. But in in this game here, like Ohio State, I'm looking at the uh, the final stats here. 662 yards to 269 to Indiana here. 340 on the ground and 322 in the air. That is balance, Jared. That is balance. Um, yeah, I was impressed with the running game. And, you know, if they, if if anyone's watching this who didn't watch Know Your Enemy on 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 Thursday, then you might be saying to yourself, oh, but it was Indiana. They and Indiana has a terrible run defense. We broke down for you on on Thursday. Yes. Why yes, that so. is not the case? That that is that is absolutely not the case that their total rush defense statistic is deceiving. They actually have a pretty decent run defense. And by the way, they did it without Dewan Jones. Fryer and his, I almost said defense. Defense isn't the right thing to say there. Um, Fryer, to his credit, did an excellent job. Did an absolutely tremendous job. No, he, I will not say he was an upgrade. Unless, of course, they want to bump him into guard. Then then we'll talk about Fryer being an upgrade. <laughs> But you aren't ready for that conversation, Austin. Yeah, overall, this is like like what Jared said just um, a little bit ago. This is exactly what we wanted to see from Ohio State. Just complete dominance in all phases of the of the game here. Offense, defense, special teams. Eh, 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 special teams was a little eh, there, but either way, though, uh, Ohio State's 7.9 per yard yeah 7.9 per attempt in rushing and averaged oh what is that 9.1 yards per play that's that's the Ohio State that we're grown to uh use what we are used to this season yeah especially seven, with the past two game especially with the past two games were wasn't as stellar of an offense but yeah good to see Ohio State really getting back into it and hopefully build on to this because Building up to it, that what's come up in less than two weeks, Jared. Yeah, uh, Austin says punt block is just defense. I, I disagree that it's totally a special teams play. I know you want to rip on the special. Teams special I know you want to rip it on is. the special teams, and you have reason to. But no, they get credit for that. Um, what is in two weeks? No, no one tell Nomad what's in two weeks. Let it be a surprise. Thank, Don't no spoilers, thank, thank, guys. Thanksgiving. <laughs> Thanksgiving. <laughs> Uh, Zach, yeah, yeah. Jim Trestle's still alive, buddy. All right. Um, uh, <laughs> let's 
let, let me let me start let's let's just start with uh talking about CJ Stroud here. I know he he had some he had some iffy games here, finally getting back into here. Uh 17 for 28, 297 and five touchdowns in this game. Uh 61% completion rating, which it was definitely uh lower than that. Uh I'm I'm pulling up the the quarter summary here. He was in the first half, he was nine for 17. He was, yeah, he was almost 50% completion in the first half and then came around the second half and played a little bit better there. But, uh, but when you have, when you have players like Marvin Harrison Jr. Yeah. Making plays there, it's, it's makes your, compl- makes your completion rating go up a little bit better there. 100%. Um, but but the I, one thing I one thing that I found really interesting uh didn't see in the second half but it spent in early on in the uh in the game you saw some design runs from CJ Stroud and CJ actually just putting his shoulder in and trying to get the extra yardage that I, I can I, I don't I don't it, want him putting his shoulder in I'm just going to go on record I don't want him putting his shoulder in I don't either but it makes you think about is the coaching staff trying to put some stuff on on tape here to make uh uh make that team uh start to th- overthink things do you think do you think that's what the coaching staff is trying to do here i don't know um i don't know it's i i i think they were just throwing i don't know I don't, I don't know if it's about film. I, I don't know if it's about film as much as maybe they're just, you know, Stroud's, a you know, he's almost has, you know, two full seasons under his belt at this point. Maybe they're just trusting him to make decisions. You think it's about the Heisman? I don't. Um, I think it's them just saying, go make decisions for yourself, like just sort of taking you know, t- taking one of the one of the braces off, I guess, and and saying if you think that's the best thing to do, go do it. That would be and my. He almost, broke, he almost broke that one there. Ended up going out of bounds. Only got like a four four or five yard gain there. But you saw he had he had a little he has a um, a second uh, gear in him there, which I think could be um, crucial. Uh, I guess that team up north here where CJ is probably going to have to pull one of those uh, read options and take off. Yeah. As, uh, yeah. I think if they want to get the running game going, that will probably be a a requirement. Um, Kyle, should we go much further without talking about Cam Bob? I mean. Yeah. So, so the receivers there. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the big, the biggest story is that last touchdown for Ohio State, that that marvelous eight yard pass to Cameron to Cameron Babb there, just an unbelievable story, and just so so thrilled that he was able to get that uh, touchdown in the game, his first game in how many years? First game in how many years? Comes back from four ACLs, a um, broken leg. Stay just sticks with it. He he didn't just be like, you know what? Maybe this is a sign, and I shouldn't play football. He he stuck with it, stayed with the team. I mean, he it's the second year that he's a team captain. I mean, he's yeah, he, he's a leader in this team, and he loves being around the football program here. Just. I'm so th- yeah, I was just so thrilled that he got the chance and was able to execute and and get a touchdown in this game and and I think uh, in our chat when we were watching the game, um, I pointed out, hey, uh, Cameron's in the game, and then everybody was like, is he? Is he? Is he? And then saw yeah. him in there, and everybody's like, throw it to him, throw it to him, and Brian Day calls a timeout, and right out of that timeout, it was the play for Cameron there. Austin yeah, says, yeah, I literally I cried, no shame. Um, a lot of honestly, players, a lot like of the players were too. I, I was just, I was like, I was, I was really just like super happy for him, but then like, it wasn't so much him getting the touchdown. It was everyone, you know, 
jumping on him and rallying around him and the reaction from his teammates that, that got to me as well. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Just All right. Absolutely, um, absolutely there. Yeah. Stadium roar was heard across the state. Yeah. <laughs> I hope exactly. so. I hope so. Uh, love, love to keep talking about Cameron, but there, there is some other parts of the team we do need to, to cover here. So Marvin Harris Jr. mentioned just unbelievable catches and just he doing just remarkable things still. Uh, yeah. But let's talk about some of the other receivers there. Uh, Xavier Johnson came in. Um, do, do we still call him a receiver? <laughs> <laughs> the the Swiss Army the Swiss Army knife uh, Xavier himself here, uh, kind of comes in and he ma he made he made an impact here not just as a receiver he had two catches but also that one handoff where he ripped off a seventy one yard just remarkable touchdown run there just just unbelievable uh, just runner's instinct and being able to see the field and make those cutbacks just absolutely um thrilled to to see him do those kind of things listen chip train him hurt in practice last week henderson again not available chop had couldn't put weight on his ankle when he was coming off the field evan Pryor obviously still out um that's four four running backs jared like Ohio State came in out and, and, they're, and they're still able to get almost eight yards of care here. <laughs> Legitimately, like they came into the season with four scholarship running backs. And of those four. Only the freshman you can like say is healthy right now. You only the freshman you can say with any level of certainty is going to play next week. Net you <laughs> next man up, which one? You got like <laughs> which which one? You got like two people. <laughs> you got like you got two people right now to that you can hand the ball off. Maybe three if you put if you put Xavier in that mix. But and I don't, we are now. Man, I I have a hard time thinking about having Xavier back there taking. A number of carries because Xavier is more of a he was a running back in high school I believe he 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 was yeah he's like a speed back yeah you're you're right he he's not going to be able to get you that you you need to run on third and one and he's going to get you that yard well I mean uh, I no know. no one seems to be doing that right yeah now. I was about to say I don't I don't think our interior offensive line is set up for that <sighs> they tried That's giving it to Rossi that that that's, failed that's, too, Austin. That's yeah. He Rossi had one yard for negative one yards, and that was that fourth and one. Ugh, man, it, it, it's probably the one thing that I uh, was disappointed in in this game was running the ball when you needed to. Yeah, in short that's, yardage situation. Yeah, and like when we get around to grading the offensive line, they're going to get knocked for that. Quite frankly. Um, yep. Third down efficiency, I, I think, was a slight disappointment. You know, if we're, if, we're, if we're getting, like, nitpicky, I think against a defense like Indiana, especially considering the number of these plays that were short yardage plays, I don't think 50% is, is good enough. I'll say it. Um, you know, it's not, it's not the worst in the world, but adjusting it to our expectations coming into this game, it's not good enough. I want to see Hayden against a fresh defense. Uh, you might get that wish. But no, that's a good point. Like Hayden has looked great whenever Hayden has gone in, but he's gone in after the defense has been properly tenderized already. Mm. Um, now, like his snaps in this game were, and, and he's had snaps in previous games as well. There were still competition snaps. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to say he's only done like, second string time killing he's had competitive snaps but it's almost always as i said later in games when the defense has been tenderized already i bet hayden rushes all over the teton defense 
I, it would be my hope that we don't have to see that, but he's looked good when he's gone in. Like, acknowledge that. We have to acknowledge that. I don't yep. think Mayan or Henderson play. Well, you don't know that against yeah, Keith. No, nobody, he says. nobody knows that. Uh, I mean, Mayan gave the thumbs up after the game saying all good Buckeye nation and even, even Ryan day, but rule number one, Jared, the doctor lies. <laughs> Nomad he came says out said that, came out and said that my doesn't expect mine to be a long-term injury. So we'll, well, we'll see. I, he he also said <laughs> Ryan Day also said that when um Jackson Smith and Jimba came off the field that oh no no he didn't repull the hamstring it was it was just that he hit his pitch count even though we all saw him grab his hamstring and he hasn't been back on the field yet forgive me for for pulling rule 1 the doctor lies straight out of my pocket yep, yep. um walking in a boot doesn't lie I, they they will precautionarily stick guys in boots. Ohio State has like an entire room with walking boots. It's it's not it's not like a civilian in a walking boot because you actually have to like pay for that shit. Ohio State just has them sitting around. Like so oh you kind of tweaked your ankle a bit. Spend the rest of the day in this boot. Like it's precautionary. I I've seen guys be put in like oh they've been in boots all week during practice and then they play on Saturday. It's it is what it is. I that doesn't mean a lot to me. Um, see you, Matt. All right, let's let's get to, let's get into grading here, Jared. Uh, I think some of these we can go pretty quickly. That we already covered some of the positions, but we'll we'll start from the start. Zach start says, "I hate top, days Jared. encryption." Literally, every coach talks in coach speak, and as far as like, um, we 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 all we all come to expect that and under the trestle era i mean <laughs> always i remember when i lived in columbus they always had a section on um was it the fan that's in columbus there yeah it was they always named it decipher deciphering trestle was it deciphering or is you confusing that with deciphering day which used to be a segment we did before we realized he gave nothing and going through all of the <laughs> <laughs> I think it may have been translating. Trust. Either way, either way, Jared, let's, yeah, let's go ahead and co let's go ahead and grade the coaching staff. And what by the way, I don't want him giving out injury. I'm just saying, I don't want him giving out injury information. Is it annoying mm -hmm. for me? Yeah, but it's the smart thing to do. Yeah. I, I, I give the coaching staff as a whole an A. This is exactly what you, we wanted from the team here. They didn't let up. I mean, they only let up one drive. They, the other seven points was off of a, was a dumb muffed fumble or muffed punt. Uh, return and then they right. and then they ended up getting seven points the next play there so they defense only let up seven points and special teams is set, the other seven if you want to go down that route but offense did exactly what we wanted them to do so yeah a i'd give them an a and i don't even know because that that touchdown came with 12 minutes left in the game i don't even know how many of the starters were in i, I don't i just legitimately don't remember um how many of the starters were in at that point? Yeah. Um, the ciphering day is like taking info from ESPN interview of the playoff committee head. Yeah, exactly. It's totally worthless. What would you grade the coaching staff, Jared? Um, I give them an A minus, I suppose. Um, I, I, I know a lot of people wanted Ryan Day to like not be stubborn and just go out there and slaughter him, but he stuck with the run. It paid off in the long run. I couldn't think of a way not to say run again. Um, <laughs> I I think you know they they had an opportunity to get Bob a touchdown. They got Bob a touchdown, and and if they happen to accidentally cover in the in the meantime, that's good too. Right, offensive coaching staff. Let, we'll move right to it. offensive coaching staff. A. I give him an A as well. You rushed, or not rushed, you you got the, uh, what was it here, 662 yards of total offense here. Yeah, A, especially with getting over 300 rushing yards too when you were struggling to do that in the past two games, A. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Nomad, I believe if I'm deciphering Nomad, says uh, A minus because they ran too many bubble screens. 
yeah <laughs> you, you you lose you lose a you lose a, a full letter grade anytime you run a bubble screen i think i said last week i'm not i'm not sticking to that but yeah um yeah i again i like that they stuck with the running game even when it wasn't amazing at first i like that they're still trying to run in short yardage it, like they're trying to prove it um again like this is what a game against indiana is for like go for it every bubble screen is a minus of a plus regular or minus depending i think i understand what you meant by that austin and i agree what's up with julian fleming uh we'll, we'll get, get there when that. we talk about the wide receivers right. um the uh yeah i think an a for the offensive coaching staff is fine quarterback quarterback i you look five touchdowns pat um cj almost passed for 300 yards there but man some of those throws were very questionable from cj in this game you think so i i, I thought so I'd, I'd probably give cj that five touchdowns and no turnovers in this game really i really want to give him a b plus but since he didn't turn the ball over had five touchdowns i'll, I'll, I'll say an a minus i'd say some a minus just because of the five touchdowns, but some of the decision making, uh, I was going to give him like a BB plus, but no turnovers, five touchdowns, yeah, all up into A minus. I honestly don't have. He forced some throws. Yeah, he does force throws, but you know what? He makes most of those when he forces a throw and it's completed, and we all go, "Wow!" No one cares. If he forces a <laughs> yeah. throw and it gets batted down, then oh, he forced a throw. Yep. I, I got I, I thought he I thought he does. I think he deserves an A um, in a game in which they primarily decided they were going to run the ball. He still almost gets 300 yards, no interceptions, no sacks, no fumbles, five touchdowns um, averaged over 10. Per completion, or is that per attempt? No, that's that's per completion. This is what a good stat line looks like. I'll take it. All right. Uh, offensive line, Jared. Now this, this was something that you said you wanted to um, to talk about a little bit here. So the offensive line, I don't believe, yeah, there were no sacks given in this game. But we Ohio know, State, but that's the expectation on, you know, we grade by expectation. We're expecting them not to give up sacks or maybe give up one sack at this point. Yeah, that's so, not that's not what we're having issues with with the offensive so, line. So no, so no, no sacks given. Rushing was seven point nine yards, which a lot of that was up to because of Xavier's seventy one yard. Um, yeah, but that still counts for it still. But Mayan Williams before he got hurt nine point eight yards per carry. Yeah, uh, Dallin had five point four yards per carry there, but you also have to look into. 714 on third downs, 0 for 1 on fourth down. I'm trying to find, and I'm having a hard time finding the stat on how Ohio State did on third and shorts, but I don't think it was all that great. So it wasn't. Line, still, still not where I was hoping to see in this game. I was hoping that Ohio State would just run it down Indiana's throat here, you got the bigger bodies, you got the more talented players. You should be able to push Indiana to be able to just have your way with them on third and shorts and fourth and shorts. Yeah. Um, I, I agree. Uh, I'm not going to knock them too bad for that because again, they were perfect in the passing game. I, yeah, I, I, I CJ them, got, I, CJ I, got a guy in his face every once in a while and not all that often. The running game was in large was in large part very good. But yeah, they're still struggling in the short yardage. So we can't give them like a an A plus or even an A. Uh, so Kyle gave him a B plus. I'll give him an A minus. I think that's I think either one is fair. Okay. The pass Looks blocking like is always here. good. The run blocking is so bad. It's not so bad. They like again, this is actually, despite what the like total yardage says, actually a pretty decent run defense with a really actually a pretty good linebacking core. Mm -hmm. Their, def like their defensive line was B, nothing B, 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 special. Um, so. That needs to be said. 
Um, the scheme is what breaks a lot of our runs. But the offensive line has to execute it. All right, running backs, Jared. T tough, tough trying to trying to grade running backs here, knowing knowing how hurt this team is. With uh, Man, when mine great. was in, he he looked good. There were times he looked really good. But then there are other times when in the third and short, and a lot of that could have been on the offensive line. But I think when Mayan Williams was in, he he did really well. He he was really well. There's he he was starting to bounce off of um wimpy tacklers. And yeah, I, I really liked what I saw in, in mine in the time that he was playing in this game. And then and then Dallin came in and you could see he had you can tell he has that little extra speed in him that yeah like that if he breaks one tackle and he's he's off to the races there so i i really like what i'm seeing from uh, dallin hayden here but I'd, I'd give the running backs probably like an a minus here i was really impressed with with the running backs that uh with dallin that came in xavier who had a carry uh yeah i was really impressed with them stepping in for for the injured running backs ahead of them. Yeah, um, I yeah I thought yeah Hayden has five point four a carry and that's without like a huge long run. His longest was twenty, you know. So that's a real accurate representation of like his consistency. Um, Mine Williams, as Kyle already pointed out, nearly ten yards a carry and like oh well, he had a long four. I don't care like a long of forty eight. Is still because without that, he's essentially 100 yards on 14 carries, which is still excellent. You know what I mean? Um, and then, you know, Xavier Johnson gets a carry and he had a 71 yard average, which you have to just point out is pretty amazing. <laughs> you know, he. So I give him an he, A plus. I give the running backs it, an A plus. Who does Dallin Hayden remind you of when you saw him running? Um. Yeah. Zach just said of Boom Heron, Wiley's a good. That's the one. Spikes and I are on the same wavelength here. Wiley. He reminded me. That's a, a good like call Michael by Wiley. Spikes. Wiley is what everyone says. Um, I think with good reason. It feels accurate. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I feel All like right. he's faster. And sh I, I, if you want a Boom Harrison comparison. That rhymed. I apologize. Um, <laughs> I, I almost say that's more chop. Yeah, my bad. Yeah, Boom, yeah. Heron. All right. Um, Got to move on here, Jared, to the wide receivers. All right. Well, I spent a little bit of time here with the wide receivers, other than if your name's not Marvin Harrison Jr. What? Uh, wait, wait, why, why are you changing the rules? <laughs> so marvin harrison jr gets an a plus he gets yeah. an a plus for me yeah outside you of only, that you only, you only you only saw three targets to a mecca in this game you saw five targets to julian fleming Ju uh, fleming only caught two of those and i believe two or maybe all three of those at least two were just dropped drop passes and this has been a a consistent thing with Fleming this year. And I was, he's his inconsistency has been consistent. Yes. It's a little, a little concerning here. Uh, when you're this deep in the season right now, I was, I was having really high hopes and we saw, we saw sparks of Fleming this year. And we're like, wow, this is when Fleming is on, he is just spectacular here. But then we saw the downs like, like this one here where it just dropped easy catches that should have been a touchdown. Uh, hey, Austin, I don't he, think it's fair to say it's been every year. This is really the first year we've seen him in any significant volume. Correct. correct. So I would say as a whole, I would, I'd probably say like an, I would say like an A minus B plus. I, I'll change it to a B plus for the uh, wide receivers. Kyle, I mean, you're right. If the next wide receiver, Xavier Johnson. 
two catches, 47 yards. And Cade Stover, who's a tight end, does not count. Emeka Abuka, who's supposed to be, you know, he, he, Fleming and Abuka combined have four catches for 62 yards. Is that enough? No, it's not. No, it is not. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you, you can't totally tank the wide receivers because of Marvin Harrison. So that keeps them to like a B. But, you know, the they're not meeting the standard that we have out for them right now outside of Marvin Harrison. <clears throat> yeah. All right. We'll move on to the tight ends here. Cade Stover. Another another multi touchdown game game for Cade Stover. Year of the tight end. It's in full effect. Tell the kids. Tell the wife. It's the year of the yes. tight end. Yeah, solid A, solid A for me for the tight end position. Yeah, I agree. And of course, like we had a good running game this game. A lot of it on the perimeter. A lot of it off of tackle, and the tight end plays a huge role in that. All right, defensive coaching here. You you hold Indiana to 269 yards. Just waiting for Jared to do something here. Uh, thank nice. you. Thank Sorry. you, there, Austin. Uh, <laughs> 3.8 yards uh, per rush, 4.2 yards per play. Yeah, I, I think overall the defense did what they needed to do here. Uh, held Indiana... Three for seventeen on third downs. Yeah, I think I think a solid A for the defense. Solid A. I yeah I agree. Um, again, they're really outside of the the muffed punt. The um, outside of the muffed punt, the situation with the offense. As far as I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm trying to find I'm trying to find the score. Okay, here it is. Um, Indiana scored in the first quarter with four seconds left on the clock. It was six plays, 75 yards. Yep. Um, th that was a really great drive by Indiana. Um, and, and and it is what it is. And we can, we can, you know, talk about holding and we can talk about other things, uh, you know, got... Was it on this play or was it on the other touchdown drive when they they had like the perfect route called against a cover two, you know, which happens. Yeah, shit happens. Um, and then, right, like I said, the other the other comes late in the game against partial backups off of a muffed punt. Uh, Indiana was held to one hundred and eleven yards. Kyle, is that correct? Uh, that was one hundred eleven passing yards. Yep. Um yeah, uh, three for 17 on third downs. That's tremendous. 269 yards. That's acceptable. Uh, I think an A is good. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, all right. Let's move to the defensive end should, here. OK, we'll, we'll get to this later, Zach. Should we uh, should we alarm on the punt return team? We'll, we'll get there. Hold on. Yeah. Uh, defensive end first, Jared. <laughs> no, Matt Would says bad, and I agree. Who would you grade the uh, defensive ends? Uh, Sawyer had an excellent game. Um, yeah. JT. Had a JT. Had a second just and a half T. In there. Yeah. Uh, JT had a good game, even if it doesn't show on the stat sheet. I thought Zach Harrison had a good game, even if it didn't show on the stat sheet. Um, I, I thought they played excellently. Yeah. I, I'd I thought JT was like a baby with how much he was being held. Yeah. Yeah. I, <laughs> it, yeah. It is what it is. Um, I appreciate that JT is always trying to fight through those holds. You know, he's never trying to get the call. He's never giving up on the play. It was bad this week. It was, but like, yeah, sometimes you get the calls and sometimes you go, don't. And I'm just not going to waste time talking about refs on the show. Yeah. All right. Defensive tackle. Kyle, should we add refs to the, should we add refs to yeah. the, uh, no, great we're, sheet? We're we're yeah, no, no, we're not. All right. Defensive tackles. I'd say solid A too. Hamilton played really well. Uh, Tyleek played well. Vincent played well. Yeah, solid A for the defensive tackles. 
Yeah. Um, Vincent had four tackles, one solo. Um, yeah, I thought they, I thought they I played had, well. had the same four tackles, one solo as well. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We'd um, like to see some more TFLs out of those guys every once in a while, but still yeah. playing well, playing well. All right. Linebackers, Jared. Oof. Steel Chambers had 10 tackles in this game. Hami Pickles Eichenberg had seven tackles, three of those for tackle for losses. Uh, Cody Simon um, had a uh, four, four tackles in there too. The linebackers did, I think, pretty well. The, the, only, the only concern I have, and that's just, that's just the linebackers we have right now, is when Ohio State comes up with a mobile quarterback. I think overall they were able to do well handling the mobile quarterback, but it's definitely something to keep an eye out. So I'd, I'd say an A for the I'm not, well. I'm not that worried about it. Like, again, like, so that, that really good drive that Indiana got at the end of the first quarter was in large part because they switched quarterbacks to their mobile quarterback. Ohio State wasn't ready for that. That played a big role into why Indiana was able to drive down the field and score. But now that we have like a real life defensive coordinator in charge of things, they fix things right away. You didn't wait till halftime. You 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 made adjustments right away. And then that was it. That was the end of that. That was the end of that. Like there was no more mobile quarterback doing a bunch of things. It was it was game over uh, for their offense once again. So, yeah, I, I thought, which, by the way, is a, is a thing we should have brought up when we were talking about the defensive coordinators uh, or the yeah the defensive coaching amazing immediate adjustment uh to to come back and you know take care of things um there were some missed right. tackles by a certain stop it austin stop it all right we're moving on we're moving on to corners jared when tommy misses Damn. a tackle safety should be there to cover everyone's gonna miss tackles sometimes everyone's gonna miss yeah. tackles sometimes the reason why you see tommy miss a tackle maybe more than you notice other people doing it is because he's so frequently the first one to the ball <laughs> three tackles for right. lost this game tommy pickle eichenberg all right jared moving on to corners let's not talk about safeties but corners first what would you rate the corners I would say outside of like one play, I didn't even notice the corners. Cam, Cam Brown gave up a touchdown that yeah. he was just outsized on. Um, I think Julian Fleming had not Julian Fleming, sorry. Um, Hancock um, had. A, was it a penalty or I forget. Um, so he had like a bad play. He got beat once. Is that what it was? I can't remember. Um, but outside of those two plays, I didn't even notice the corners all game. It probably helps a lot that the quarterback that they subbed in has a sub 50% completion percentage. So that, that helps, um, <laughs> pass interference was ham was cam Hancock got beat. Uh, cam also got beat for the touchdown, but again, he kind of just got jumped over by a six, six tight end who probably weighs twice as much as he did. Uh, yeah. I, I can't blame him too hard on that. Um, but yeah, uh, I think, I think your a minus is good, Kyle. Yep. Yep. A minus. Maybe a B plus yeah. again, simply because Indiana's quarterback situation situation is so bad. Yep. All right. Safeties here. I, I'd give the safeties in this game an A plus. I, I think I think the safeties in this game, especially uh, especially uh, Ransom. Ransom just was a monster in this game. He was he was all over the field. He came up came up big on um, on critical downs. Yeah, he was just you talked you talked about uh, Eichenberg being all over the field. Ransom was all over the field. So. Um, I'd give an A plus for the for the safeties. Um, Let me say this about the safeties, and I'm going to give everyone and Hickman pr did, played pretty well too. Oh yeah, he did. Um, let me say this about the safeties, and I'm going to give everyone a chance to tell me I'm <laughs> S tier. <laughs> I'm going to give everyone a chance here to tell me I'm wrong, or not even to tell me I'm wrong, because I'm going to ask this in the form of a question. The two big plays that the Ohio State defense gave up were right 
everyone's just telling me I'm wrong already, which is actually pretty expected. The <laughs> the two big plays were given up by splitting the safeties. Are we going to say that's on the safeties or on the scheme? Everyone's telling me, everyone's just saying I'm wrong. I asked a question. You can't tell me I'm wrong when I'm just asking a question. And it wasn't even a leading question. It was an honest question. Like everyone's, everyone's going to say, everyone's going to say scheme. Everyone's, they were in a cover too. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's fair. Uh, so yeah, I think, I think the, I think I'll give them an A, not an A plus. They put up stats like crazy, but I think I'm just going to do the A. All right. And lastly here, special teams, special teams, um, uh, had a muffed punt, but they also blocked a punt too. So they kind of, they kind of, um, okay. Two. They muffed two, but lost one, yeah. but they did, but they did block a punt too. They did block a punt. Um, <sighs> so I'd, I'd probably say a, like a, no kickoffs out of bounds, no kickoffs out of bounds. Um, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd probably say like a B minus, I would say B minus is fair. I don't even know. It's like you you can't you can't give up two muff punts. You can't do that. No. I'll say a C. Okay. All right. Buckeye leaves, Jared. Buckeye leaves. Let's start with the offensive Hold on. side. Can, can we change this up? Can we change this up? Can we start with okay. the wild card? Sure. Wild card is Cameron, Cameron Bob. Yeah. Bab. Okay. It's Bab. Bab. Cameron Bab. Bab. Cameron Bab. <laughs> yeah. It, that's, yeah I, that's that's that, that's that, that's that's everybody. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Now, now that we got the wild card out of the way, defense is Cameron Bab. Oh, now, now we're going. <laughs> okay, we're we going backwards now. <laughs> defense is Cameron Bab. Uh, <laughs> defense. I'll go steel chambers. It's Bab, not Bob. Uh, yeah, I was just kind of kidding. All right, offense, Jared. We'll start with the offense oh. here. Uh, Marvin it, Harrison. I, yeah, yeah. Jared, Jared <laughs> said Mar Marvin Harrison just, just crazy, crazy good how how he is here. But you know, I'll, I, I, I think the other part who and when you needed a spark and he came in and made some. Um, made some critical catches there too. I'd, I'd probably say Xavier. I'll give my buck. I leave to Xavier there. I don't blame you. He was the second best wide receiver on the team and the third best running back on the team in the same game. Josh <laughs> Fryer is actually a good call, Austin, and probably yeah. would have been my wild card leaf in any other game. Like in any other game, he would have gotten my wild card leaf. Stepped in. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Stepped in and killed it. Exactly. Austin. Exactly. Yeah. And in, in my and moving on to the defense for our Buckeye ladies, I I'm going to give mine to Ransom. Just this was this was this was um, just a great game from him. Probably one of his best games as a Buckeye. That's totally fair. And I already said I'm giving mine to Steele, right? Sure. Yeah. Do the one of the best linebacking names you can have in Steele Chambers. Yeah, for sure. Linebacker, I mean, you know what? He's he's linebacker one. Uh, he might be uh, running back one before too long. Um, no, no, Jared. Listen, how 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 else would you like to go down in Ohio State history than being both linebacker one and running back one against Michigan? Oh boy, go straight up, straight up gamble on it. got just be straight up just gamble we have it hasn't been done since right all right let's let's go ahead and let's go ahead and get to our ask slip guys questions here jared all right uh nomad asks is 340 rushing yards good yes, yes that is that is very good and how about 69 tackles which is what the defense ended up having uh i, I don't know 
I'll, honestly, I would have preferred to have seen a game in which uh, Indiana didn't get so many. Just like if the, if you get 69 tackles, that means the other team at least ran 69 plays. And I'm just looking for a chance to say 69 as many times as possible, 69. But, you know, maybe hold them to less plays. All Come right. on, guys, you got to keep going with the nices. You, If someone sneezes <laughs> three times, you say bless you three times. You can't just wait till the end and do one all encompassing. <laughs> you all right. wait. Actually, as a rhythm sneezer, yes, that's true. Spikes, you, you do, in fact, wait. He also wants to know um, maybe nine games throwing five touchdowns or more. Is, is that good? That is also good. Yes. <laughs> it's also ridiculous. Yeah. Y'all, high state fans are stupid spoiled on quarterbacks right now. I'm just going to say it. All right. The Z man has, um, has some uh, questions here. Uh, well, just real quick answers here, Jared. Uh, is Marvin Harrison Jr. even human? Yes, but an exceptional human. On a scale of 1 to 10, what were your emotions when Cameron Babb got his touchdown? 7 when he got the touchdown. But I hit 10 when I saw the reaction of his teammates. <laughs> yes. The, the actual touchdown, about a 7. The reaction from the team, a 10. Yeah. Is the running game fixed or was Indiana just that bad and and we should still be concerned about Michigan? Yes, yes, and yes. Like, th these aren't either ors. You should, is the running game fixed? It was better. And I think they addressed some things. Is it fixed? Or is it, or was it just because Indiana's bad? Again, you can go back, listen to Know Your Enemy. Indiana's rush defense is not that bad. They actually have a real solid crew of linebackers. Um, this this was not that bad of a of a running defense. Again, not nearly as bad as their total yardage looked. Like their mm -hmm. per carry, they were like thirtieth in all of college football, which is not bad. No. Um. So, Ohio State has had. This is this is a better run defense than Northwestern. Now, of course, the conditions were different. So, like, on a neutral, dry, non-windy field, this is a better run defense than Northwestern. Yep. All right. Uh, why are Hickman and Ransom just so good? Uh, one, they're being they're put, put in, the, in the position to be good. <laughs> yes, which is, of course, a huge deal. Of course, Hickman was one of the few standouts on the defense last year, even when last year's defense was last year's defense. Um, they're they're just exceptionally talented and hardworking, and they're being put in two places, being put into place to succeed. I think that's that's about yeah. that's about all you can say about anyone, really. As long as Mayan is healthy, he is most definitely running back one. Correct. Well, what about if Henderson's healthy? I, I'm going. I'm I, going to assume. I don't, assume, I don't see assume a, if everybody if everybody's healthy is mine. Williams running back one. I think it's Henderson. I think it's Henderson. Mine has looked better this season. Austin says. I think Henderson's been dealing with injuries since the beginning of the year. And of course it's now Mayan's turn. Um, Trey does have a higher ceiling and I think Trey yeah, runs I, better I, behind a zone block, more of a, a zone block offensive line and Ohio state's been running more man block. Um, yep. Yeah. Yeah. We've been over this gap block. Yeah. yeah. That's what I mean. Uh, I, I disagree. I, I think, I think it is, Henderson as your number one running back, even though Mayan is has the better stats and has looked better overall. I think if every running back was healthy 100%, running back one is Henderson still, in my opinion. All right. Uh, last question from the Z man. Did Xavier Johnson's 71 yard yarder make you want to just cream yourself? God, that was amazing. Yes. 
Yes, <laughs> yes. is the answer. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it just it gives you a little bit of hope with the running back situation being what the running back situation is that maybe there's another running back hiding on the roster. And, yep. you know, of course, you just you need to get everyone you want to get everyone healthy, of course. Um, yep. All right, but yeah, I think it's, Jared, it is what it is. Yep. You just and I think you just hope that the running backs find health as as yep. as the season concludes. All right. And I think that is it, Jared. I think that's all the questions we have. You have anything else before we wrap it up? Um, yeah. I want to tell everyone to uh, visit our T-shirt store pages. It is it is Christmas time. Uh, and, you know, when you when you have to count for when you have to account for like shipping, it is definitely Christmas time. Just sorry. Thanksgiving holdouts. I get it. I'm one of you. But, you know, shipping's a thing. Um, so yeah, you can check out our, uh, Sloopcast store with our Sloopcast merch at merch.thesloopcast.com. If you want something that doesn't look like it's podcast merch, which I, I understand, uh, you can go to 7071.thesloopcast.com and you can find just like some Ohio based designs there. Um, want to encourage everyone to check out our YouTube page. And, you know, you can just search Sloopcast on YouTube or you can go to uh, youtube.thesloopcast.com and also be sure to check out the Buckeye Huddle YouTube page. Um, again, you can just search Buckeye Huddle on, on YouTube and you will find them as well. We're currently posting the show to both of those places, uh, which we're incredibly happy about. Um, yeah, that's it. That's I think that, I think that's all the plugs I feel like doing. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's Corner? Ohio State opens up this um, this Sunday evening a 25-point favorite over Maryland. 25 over Maryland? 25. Are they that enough. much? <laughs> are they that much better than Indiana? Because, like, they're better than Indiana. But are they that much better than Indiana? Well, they did. They didn't even put up a single point against Penn State last weekend. It was a thirty to nothing route, and I'm I'm looking here. Yeah, um, baby two is back. I I didn't realize he was back here, and yeah, he didn't look all that great there. Um, Maryland beat Indiana thirty-eight to thirty-three. By the way, thank you, Austin. So not that much better. <laughs> It just feels like a feels like a small line. It feels like a small line, I guess is all I'm saying. Yeah. I, did they did they have did they have little Tua when they played Indiana, Austin? Uh let me That does help. Although yeah, as as Kyle pointed out, he did not look all that good. Yeah, ever know. ever since ever since he was injured, he hasn't looked at that all that good. Wisconsin ten for twenty three and then Penn State eleven for twenty two. He has one touchdown, one interception in those two games total. And a total right. of 100, 151 yards in there both games combined. All right, Not that's good. it. That's the end of the show. Um, tonight's ending music brought to you by Playing to Vapors, Columbus-based uh, band. You'll love them. Just stick around, do nothing, and listen. Um, and uh, on the podcast side, if you want to... Uh, if you want to listen to the song and you're watching us on YouTube, I will be providing a link down in the show notes to the song. We can't play songs on YouTube. You get it. You understand you're, you're on YouTube watching this. You, you understand. So, um, with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen, to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is playing to vapors. Mm-hmm.